What up, everybody? My name is Chris. This is Wheelhouse Trading, and welcome to the Wheelhouse. So I thought today what we would do is take a look at Bitcoin, specifically Bitcoin, and do a pros and cons from a technical perspective only, not fundamental, not opinion based. I may voice, voice some opinions along the way, um, but I'm not going to put it in the tally column. We're going to tally pros, we're going to tally cons, again, technical only, okay? This does not have to do with, you know, adoption rate, and it doesn't have to do with anything fundamentally, okay? Just technically. All right. And I am going to try to look through a fresh perspective. Um, in fact, I mean, I don't want to take these, uh, these la little bit of lines off. I've already taken so much off, but... Uh, I just want to kind of look at it from a fresh perspective, uh, pros and cons. Um, I believe if we were looking from a fundamental basis, we would have a lot of pros. Uh, I think if we're looking from a technical, we'll probably end up with some cons. Let's get started. So the first thing is, you know, this more of a recent primary trend. Okay, the diagonal line going up. Uh, from the beginning of that bull run that was uh, started back in October 20 of, of 2020. And, uh, you know, we, we went up and came down and we kind of established this, this, main, uh, this main area right here of 28,523, okay? Uh, it went on to rally and we made a new higher high, okay? Just a quick little simple backstory. Okay, we made a little higher high. And if you were to take off, you know, this and, you know, this, you could see essentially that we are trending up. Um, and this primary trend, which I guess you call maybe a local primary trend, uh, is, is heading up. And sometimes uh, things will break below and bounce back, but most of the time with a high probability when they break a primary trend, it ends up doing what has happened on the indexes, creating a new primary trend, okay? Most of the time. Now, uh, you don't know that until you get a confirmation and then it starts butting its head up and then following this new trend down. So you don't know that until, until you get that to happen, all right? We can't say if we uh, have created a new primary trend, which is a, a downtrend instead of an uptrend, okay? Because to this point, uh, even though it has been going down for a while, it still is in an overall uptrend on a local primary, okay? Um, so I just wanted to kind of go through that. Now, most of the time with a high probability, when a stock or a crypto breaks a primary trend, uh, it, it's, it's typically uh, ends up going in the direction that, that it's broken. So if it's broken above, it would retest and then go up. If it's broken below, it would retest, reject, and come down further. So with a high probability, um, the, the primary trend has been, has been broken. You can see by the candle wicks are below it, okay? And I think if you go out and look at the weekly, you would see that from here, touch, touch, and the body is still above it. Okay, the body is above, the wick is below. Now, just a quick thing on TA. I know some people use the body and some people use the wick. In my experience, in all my training, you always use the wick when it comes to trend lines, okay? Um, but you always use the body with confirmations above or below the trend lines, okay? So we use the wick, okay? Therefore, the body is actually on the line. The body is on the line. So we have not broken it, okay? 
I cannot give that a pro or a con. That is a neutral. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to understand that we are at a moment of truth. We are at a precipice. We are at a moment of decision. Okay. And you can see on the weekly um, that, that, you know, we've not, we've come down for one, two, three, four weeks and we're at the line. Okay. And tomorrow, Sunday, which might be today when you see the video is, uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to get a fifth purple candle and, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see where that ends up. Okay. So I can't get that a pro or a con, but what I can do is tell you that the blue ribbon in the middle shows trend and it has not gone red for a very, very long time. And it actually has a red tip right there, if you can see. So to me, that is a major, major con because it is not easy to achieve. It is not easy to achieve a red ribbon on a weekly unless you are in a true downtrend. And this is the very beginning also coming into a weekly close. So that is one for the negative. Okay, let's go back to the daily. We're only, only going to be looking at daily, weekly, and possibly monthly for the pro and con list. We're not going to be looking at short time frames because we're not trading. We're looking at an overall technical picture, not fundamental. If it was fundamental, we can make a video on that. There's all kinds of really positive things going on. Okay. Now, the, and I just have to say, from a technical perspective, Bitcoin has been very difficult to predict. Uh, because when we get all the good signs, you know, we get our little uh, indicators here flashing green, we get an HMA, we start seeing the cloud open up, the ribbon go blue, and you hadn't seen that in so many months. I mean, you hadn't seen that since December of 2021 until March 24th, 2022. You hadn't seen that. So it was a bull trap. And it's very hard to predict because we're getting a lot of sideways movement and it looks and appears as if we're going up um, because of the primary trend which is breaking and it also appears that we're going up if you look at it like this and we're going to look at things from a few different perspectives okay so if you're looking at it as if it's a channel like this and you're just removing this primary trend real quick and you're coming in from a perspective like this Maybe you actually take that down and those are wicks for rejection. Okay. You, you look at it like a channel like this. Well, it's, it's you know, what you would consider range bound. Okay. It's, it's up, it's down. It's up, it's down. It's up, it's down. Okay. That's kind of how that is. But if you add in this, you're essentially looking at a bear flag. Okay. And a bear flag has an 80% probability that it will continue to go down. Okay. So if looking at it as a bear flag, which I think is a good way to actually look at this right now, that would be a con. Okay. So the next thing is, and this is right about 90, 93, 94% of the time, um, the only time that it can mess you up is when a market is sideways, under accumulation or under distribution. And that would be these ribbons, okay? Let me, let me put them on the chart here for you so you can see a little closer. Typically, they will indicate trend and show you when you're, what part of the market cycle you're in, bull or bear, okay? upside downside okay they'll, they'll show you you're trending up they're very good with that they'll show you when they're trending down this is why that bull trap was very confusing and a lot of people covering bitcoin um you know there's a lot of uh theory and opinion but from a technical perspective we're in a downtrend and the ribbons are showing up now the ribbons are tight okay uh which is which is good that means it's not a severe downtrend because when they spread out there it's in a severe uptrend or severe downtrend but it is it is purple and it is trending down so trend and primary trend are very important okay and bear flag chart pattern okay that's three cons zero pros so far okay um 
This thing is typically never wrong. I can't really ever find it to be wrong on a chart. Yes, there's gonna be volatility involved during it, but the HMA and the signal smoothing on it, it really shows when you can buy because it calculates the sum uh, greater or, or less than or greater than the mean, okay? So it, it keeps you out of trouble. It says sell right there, it went red. It says buy right here, it went blue. And as you can see, it said sell right there, it went red. And uh, right here, when it reverses, it shows the bottoming. Um, and, you know, it all has to do with the slope and the curve of the reversal and then the color change. So, you know, this was going up, which was positive, but big rejection off the channel. And the HMA actually is rejecting off of its own 200 on the daily. So HMA red right now coming down is bad. However, I just want to tell you something a little bit about the, the whole moving average. Um, typically when this thing comes down and it curves right in the middle of the curve is the sweet spot to buy. So like for instance, like right here where that arrow flashed, see how it curved sweet spot to buy. Okay. Right where it curves over here in the middle, three cells, sweet spot to sell, sweet spot to sell. Okay. So, and, and you don't really want to pay attention to the colors going up. So if it's blue going up and moves to red, that's, that's a dip in an uptrend. You want to really focus on reversals, um, when to get in, uh, use, using the middle of the whole moving average is a really good way that I found. Um, and right now it is showing that it is still coming down and it looks like it could come down for a little bit longer. You can see once it turns, see this was a sharp turn. This is a mild turn. I do like that it's mild, but it is red. I have to mark it as a con. It's rarely wrong. It also said to sell here. It also had five buy signals here, which has been really conflicting for me because I've gone through all the indexes going back about 20 years on the, the Dow, the SPY, and the NASDAQ, and I really can't find a green triangle signal that hasn't really hit the bottoms pretty perfect. So this, this particular indicator that I have has a ton of coding and it measures a ton of stuff. Money flow, um, you know, it's got, you know, stochastics built in, divergences built in, chalkins, it's got uh, deviations, it's got Bollinger's, it's got a lot built into that little triangle, okay? It even calculates engulfing candles, supports, resistances, everything um, for you. And it it is flash one, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of those is one of the indicators in the background that uh, is, is seeing something that we're not. Maybe it's accumulation, maybe it's a slow, steady climb on, uh, you know, money money flowing in. There's there's things that we just can't see. The fact that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, or is that a six or is it five? Oh, sorry, five. The fact that it has that is is quite tremendous. You don't get that very often. Um, so we'll go ahead and put that as one on the pro, okay? Because this thing does tend to see things before we can actually visually see them on the charts just because it, it calculates so much behind the scene. Now, okay, guys, you've been on this channel, above the 200, below the 200, bullish if you're above, bearish if you're below, we're below, that has to be, what did I just do? This was four and this was one. And this is now gonna be five because we're below the 200. Okay, the cloud, which is the five to nine, okay? It's a swing traders method. The cloud is red, you gotta give that a, a, a con, okay? All this is in relation to a prediction based on technicals of which direction this thing um, should continue to go. Now, let's see, we covered HMA 200. Cloud, the, a chart pattern. Let's look at some more chart patterns. Let's look at some more chart patterns because this thing is more or less kind of loaded with chart patterns. Uh, there's a lot of ways to look at Bitcoin currently, and that's why it is, it's, you gotta give these guys a break on YouTube. It's hard for all of us right now because the market is so sentiment driven, okay? This is, you know, fundamentally, I know I'm not here to talk about opinions or fundamentals, but fundamentally, I still am in the camp that Bitcoin, Tesla, and real estate are all some of the best investments you could ever have. 
Tesla might come down further, but fundamentally it's amazing. Bitcoin might come down further, but fundamentally it's amazing. It's like a must have in my opinion. In fact, I'm having so much trouble selling it, even though, you know, I kind of know better. I'm really struggling on, on getting rid of it. And, and we'll go over maybe some of those reasons here why. Um, now, let's say that this ends up looking something like a kind of like a symmetrical type pattern. Okay, which is something like this. Let's just say we're dealing with something of this nature. Well, then, you know, within, you know, by June 11th, which is my birthday, <laughs> we, we will have a decision. And, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's just going to keep going sideways and then break up or down. But, you know, because I don't know and it's really hard to tell, I, I can't really say that and, and use this measure move. There's just not enough data. So I have more data on a bear flag. We can also look at, as far as chart patterns, we can kind of look at some like wedge scenarios. You know, again, this is why this is incredibly, uh, you know, this is, this is kind of tough right now um, because we're, we're getting a lot of a lot of short-term moves uh, based on the sentiment and you know this is this particular chart is the Bitcoin chart is connected to the Nasdaq 100 and tech there's a major sell-off now tech is down uh, it's I it's down more I'm not gonna go look right now but it's actually over 24 percent on the Nasdaq and Bitcoin from its all-time high is down 47.93 percent so if you're looking at kind of this wedge pattern, typically these things actually break up, okay? And um, that might actually happen as the wedge tightens. There's a contraction, meaning people are willing to buy higher and sell lower. So there's a contraction on a wedge and it's coming down to a major level of support. And, you know, possibly we get over in here you know, in that June area, and this thing plays out with a major bounce, okay? By then, you know, we might be seeing inflation come down. Um, I, you know, we the, the big inflation going up is probably the worst of that is over. And now we're kind of, you know, somewhere at the top. We're either coming to the top, we're at the top, or we're coming down from the top. We're, we're up in that area. Therefore, the worst of it's probably over. Therefore, um, you know, the dollar will start to come down. Equities might be able to rally. Um, I don't want to get too out too into that. I just want to stick to topic on what I see technically. Okay, so wedge is good, contraction is good, coming to support is good. Still, I don't have like a ton of information to know how that's going to play out, but it is a positive. I think we should give it a, a positive. You know, we need some positivity, right? So we got two pros, six cons currently. Let's take this stuff off. Let's see what else we are dealing with here. Okay, so we have this big drop right here. Which was 39,656. That was what you would consider, if you would call this a head and shoulders pattern, a neckline. And um, we broke that neckline recently. So I, I'm gonna say because we're below that, it's kind of like the 200, we have to consider that a con because every time you break one of these major supports or you have under the 200 or a purple ribbon or a red HMA or a red cloud with momentum coming down, you have that much more work to go back up. So we're gonna count that as a seven. Now, next stop right here, 32,875, well, actually next stop would be uh, 34,133, which we are still above. And, uh, you know, it would probably go, if it came down, it would go 34,133.90. It would make a little pit stop here at 32,875.58. And then, you know, the big number that I'm seeing uh, that, that probably will play uh, from a capitulation sell-off down to a major buy spot because the price will be so attractive uh, would be 28,541.34, okay? 
It's hard for me, this is an opinion, it's hard for me personally to think that we would go below that. Um, I do think that there would be a significant bounce. However, markets are strangely erratic at the moment. And um, yeah, we're just gonna have to wait and see. But I would, I would think that right now what we would wanna do is we'd wanna probably grab something like the VPVR so the point of control, we, we've broken past the point of control. So that is definitely got to be an eight right here. Being below the point of control means that the most liquidity changed hands at this number right here of 38,538, or sorry, 38,747.76. That's the point of control. That means that, that most selling and buying and trading of Bitcoin took place at that number, okay? And now that is going to be acting as a resistance instead of a support. So that's a major support level that's been broken on the VPVR. Okay, so now we have to look at transactional history and there's not a lot of support down here. However, um, it's a major support. And I wanna, I wanna explain why that's a major support. Because along the way in the bull run, and this is a cycle, Along the way, this thing had a major double touch, two major pivot low spots that double bottomed on that. That is, in my opinion, uh, from a, sorry, not, not necessarily an opinion, but a technical analysis opinion, is a very significant stronghold for the technical charts of Bitcoin. So I do think that if we break this number, 3426692 and we break this one 3269304 then this is really kind of that line in the sand and you know if you come back to your bear your bear flag pattern okay it tends to go uh you know like the distance so i haven't done this so let's just see what what would happen and it would be from the time it broke which is the yellow line and look, it just happens to fall exactly on that number. So from a bear flag measured move, typically the measured move plays out and it would play out in a bear flag 80% of the time to the downside. It's already broken that support, the point of control support and um, the, the, pattern, the pattern support as well. So that's three supports broken and a measured move that happens to line up exactly to the thesis I was just trying to explain. So I do think that 28,570.73, right in that range, is viable, okay? Now we've already added those things to the cons. I'm just uh, adding some additional uh, theory and thoughts here, okay, to that. We all want Bitcoin to go up. We all believe in Bitcoin, okay? Um, but we have, to, uh, we have to look at this as, you know, rational TA and be logical from a technical perspective, fundamental is completely different, okay? From a fundamental perspective, we're in a whole different ballpark, okay? It's a different type of video. Okay, so typically, I am a trend trader. I'm also a momentum-based pivot-to-pivot directional trader and directional swing trader at the same time. And, you know, this is a downtrend under the 200s, bearish, red HMA, red cloud, red ribbon, breaking supports, bear flag, high probability. That's, you know, we're ending up, you know, it's not looking good. Now, let's go look at, let's look at volume currently. Volume currently has been matching the chart. It's been sporadic up and down. There's been buying and selling. But see these big purple volume spikes? These big ones right here? Okay, what happened, right? That's, that's like a sell-off. So the volume will spike and the and the price action will come down and it'll show up in the volume and that that it doesn't necessarily mean it's just that one day there could be multiple days that take place after and that will continue to come down and you know you'll you'll go the other direction or it'll even out on the blue volume so we had one here it was correct okay it came down volume spiked we had one here it came down volume spiked okay and then it leveled off then another one I'm looking at right here, it came way down, waterfall sell off, okay? And then finally, it just it leveled out, okay? So you have the 
there's more purple and fine line started being more blue. That's that's the trend and it shows up in the volume and the trend and the ribbons and stuff. Okay, you had some selling. It looks like you had a pretty nasty day over here, which is where the ribbon went. So I trade a lot with the ribbons. And if you notice that volume, it's where the ribbons cross because a lot of people are trained the way that I'm trained where, you know, you, you know, you're going to have these EMA ribbons and, you know, they're going to tell you if you're in an uptrend or a downtrend. And if you buy right, if you buy correctly your assets, 80% um, of all your future problems go away. So knowing how to enter is really important, but also knowing how to exit and understanding, um, you know, where you're at in the process with some cycle theory isn't the worst thing. And a lot of people are trained that way where, you know, they, they know, you know, like I do, above the 200, ribbon goes blue, you stay in, ribbon goes red, you sell. Even if you're above the 200, you definitely sell if you're below the 200. Well, right now, you're not supposed to be in, okay? You're not supposed to be in from a technical, like, you know, perspective of trend trading and, and, and whatnot, okay? So that's, you know, we're in, a lot of people are in. Um, my last, my, Okay, my stuff off the exchange, I'm not selling. I got way lower than where we're at, and I don't think it's ever going to go that low. My current trade is actually down uh, almost 10% on Bitcoin, just to be full, fully disclosed. Um, I got caught up in this, and then I, I did what I talk about not doing a lot on this channel, and that's being emotional. I got caught up. I just, I just, I just love Bitcoin. I'm emotional about it. Okay, there it is. Sorry. I just love it. I, I also like feel that way about quite a few cryptos actually, but Ethereum. And um, I have some other ones I really like too that I haven't sold like Solana, Luna. Um, I'm down a lot on Aave and I like Aave too. Um, so it is what it is. I do think that the alts uh, would take a lot of damage on the chin. Um, so we wanna be careful with that. And it really doesn't make sense to ever DCA on the way down. I know that people think that, but professionals, that's not how you really do it. What you do is if you get caught up in it, but you have a high conviction in it, what you do is you have a condition that needs to be met before you buy, which would be buying, say, the bottom. So as an example, if you bought here when this went blue, the HMA back here, as an example, okay, so, you, you bought here, okay, and you went up and you, you stayed in, okay, instead of selling. And then you bought more, you scaled in, which is actually correct. And then you actually stayed in, okay. And a lot of people think buying the dip and DCAing this whole way through is the way to do it. It's not. What you, you, you want to DCA um, in, on the dips and the uptrend. Okay, but in a downtrend, the way that you do it is different. Okay, and this is the big misconception out there that I'm seeing from a lot of the amateurs. So you don't DCA on the way down. Okay, the reason is because you're adding pressure to the downward pressure that's happening. You're adding more shares or more tokens in a downtrend. So what you have to do is have an indicator. So my indicator is when this thing comes around and gets to the middle and it's blue, well, then I'm buying because there is a chance with a high probability I'm buying the bottom. So let's just say I stayed in and now I'm way down this 47.93, okay? Well, I don't want to be just shaving, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there and spending all this money and adding to the negative downward pressure by buying the dip and averaging down in dollar cost averaging in the wrong direction, okay? You're, you're supposed to be doing that actually in the uptrend. I know it's a misconception, but I'm just telling you how it really is. What you do is you come down and when that thing turns blue, then you buy and you cut the sucker in half or a third or a fourth or a fifth or, you know, an eighth or whatever. You cut it down depending on how much money you have. And you will have a lot more money to do that if you're not buying and going down faster, you know. Um, so you want to have a condition. And when this thing turns blue, consider that a possible bottom and you... Like, for instance, if this went up and you stayed in, you might have bought here. Okay, well, the difference between here and here is about you, 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 cut, your, you cut your loss of 47.93 in half by doing that instead of cutting it in like, you know, a smaller increment. And now you're in and it's kind of falling back to where you bought. Okay, so you're not really at a loss on these ones. And then it comes down and it decides to go blue here. 
you buy more here and you just pull down all of your averages down and then you're into momentum which will you'll have more tokens and you'll be in an uptrend so you're putting your money in correctly into an uptrend but you have to wait you can't gamble you can't be addicted you can't be trying to go against the trend and the system and fight the fed and do all this you have to just be patient if you messed up and didn't sell okay a lot of people just hold bitcoin forever which i think is one of the best smartest things that you could do with this now i am a trader i'm a very good trader in fact i don't really lose money on my trades and if i do it's like one two percent whereas holding you can be losing you know five ten percent like fast holding in this market is not good holding in a bull market is wonderful we are not in a bull market we're in a bear market therefore only trading short time frames strict conditions stop losses and intraday is is your best bet for crypto and stocks um holding is tough and you know i wouldn't tell anybody that has held this whole way and uh who has been dollar cost averaging or buying the dip i wouldn't tell anybody to sell at the low okay don't do that you're already in too deep what you need to do is figure out a way to make more money but you need to stop averaging down you need to wait for your condition to turn whether it's on this support this support or maybe it comes down further and it's way down somewhere else but you're getting your money in right if it's against conviction and you made a mistake coming down over time long term this thing is going to go way 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 up it's it's like owning real estate and and a lot of people have high conviction for bitcoin so a lot of people probably just you know held and maybe they got the conviction in the fomo zone in the in the distribution zone where people got faked out over here and it fell and they're down a lot well it'd be better to cut it in half than to cut it you know in like a tenth you know, just that's not really doing much for you on an asset like Bitcoin that's very expensive or any asset for that matter it should still be the same condition. So we're going to wait if you're in and you're trying to hold long term, you're actually going to wait. You're going to save all that DCA money because you don't want to put it in in a downtrend until you get a confirmed uptrend because you are adding more tokens, which means you are increasing the pressure of loss. OK, so we don't need to put any of that on the pros and cons. Um, let's take a look. And so our volume kind of uh, looks like it, it kind of capitulated right here. Boom, big sell off. And we know that I was in a wheelhouse Wednesday when that happened. It hit the 32. Oh, it's crazy that night. Uh, again, we had another one here, but look up and boom, another drop, which we're going to be looking at the support. We already talked about it. Okay, next one that we had, we had a pretty bad day right here, sell off. And that's where the cloud closed and it told you. And you had two big days in a row very recently. Okay, now we have we have seen the spikes in the volume, okay? And when the volume spikes purple, you know, we get these big sell-offs. We, we've indicated that. What I wanna look at is the weekly, okay? I feel like when you're looking and trying to really assess something like we are today in this video, we wanna be looking at longer time frames. okay? When I trade, I trade on the minutes to the hour and, that, and I have my systems for that and that's, what I'm best at, most profitable at, and most confident in. Um, I used to be very confident in, um, you know, just holding, but I have been burned and learned my lessons so many times, and it's not my first bear run. So uh, it, it's it's extremely damaging to hold uh, when markets drop. That's why I'm so adamant about stop losses. That's why I'm so adamant about rules and conditions and and uh, that's why I've been saying, you know, get out of margin, de-risk, put cash on the side weeks before the drop. I did it in every single video. Why? Because I saw it coming and I still didn't even get completely out. I did get a lot out, uh, but I didn't get completely out. And I'm just waiting for big momentum days. And what I'll do is I'll just buy five, six X in as it's coming up and I'll de-risk. And I've already done that to a ton of positions. And then, and then as I stack cash, I just wait for bullish momentum and I do it again and again. And I just, I'm, I'm bringing in money to muscle out my positions, trying to get to cash. And then I'm going to let this market settle. And then I want to come in with my conditions and, and, you know, buy the bottom and I'll scale in instead of scale down. Um, you know, that's the way I'll do it. So definitely didn't get out perfect, but got out, um, pretty good. And, uh, so on the weekly, we really should take a look at these volume spikes. And I think we'll get a little bit better of an idea. So back here, 
before the the last uh, bull run, we had major, major volume spikes right in here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, in the direction of price action. Okay, this is weekly, so each candle is a week. Okay, big volume up, big sell off. Okay. Here we go again. These three candles, the middle finger, basically saying your, your Bitcoin's coming down. Big volume up, big candle down, and a sell-off, okay? And then it wasn't until my little indicator over here flashed that little triangle, and then volume kind of tapered off in a nice, nice, uh, cool way, and that has looked okay. Now, we had one big one here. We had one big one here. It looks like we had one big one here. And we're going all the way back from 2018, November 2018. We're looking at March uh, of 20. We're looking at May of 21. And we're pretty much like in a whole zone here. And then we're increasing volume, purple volume, and the price is coming down. So remember, the higher this goes up, the further this comes down. And it's going in the direction of price action, which is indicating to me that it is going to continue to come down. Okay? So after it goes through these big drops, there's some time, and then you get, and only then is what I see here. So so it's like boom, and then some time, and then it takes off, and then boom, and then some time, and then it takes off, and then boom, and then some time, and then it takes off. We really haven't had the boom yet. Okay, we're looks like looks like one might be coming in, but we can't be positive until we see it. When we see the volume spike like this, this thing drops, and then some time goes by, the bottom happens, and there it is. Is it is it thirty? Is it 34,100? Is it, or 33,700 where I think it's going to go? Or is it going to go further down to that 28,800 area, which I think is very possible as well? So I think we need to see that big volume spike um, like all the other big dips had, okay? So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, move that over to a nine. Because this kind of weekly downward volume pressure indicates more pain to come. Okay. Okay. Let's look at our dynamic trend indicator. Okay. This is a probability system I created. I did all the, the settings a certain way. Each first, each indicator, they don't know each other. All right. So let, let's look at this. So I, I did all the settings here um, a certain way, and it's a probability system, and it tells you if things are going to continue to go up or down. Okay. The way it works is, I you know, and and you know, it's short or long. So blue line is below the purple. That that's one. Okay. That's one negative. This is showing red. That's two negatives. Purple on top of blue. That's three negatives. Purple histogram. That's four negative. Stochastic. Blue crossing pink to the downside is negative, okay? This blue below is six. This blue below the pink is seven, okay? And then I use the cloud eight, the ribbon nine, the 210, and then the volume and the price action 11, 12. So you have 12 different things worth eight points and it's a 96% that it could go up or down. And this is showing from a probability standpoint that 96% chance this is actually coming down on my probability system, which is quite accurate. Um, you learn that stuff in the courses and I, okay, we got 10 cons, two pros. Okay. Let's go look at something that I think is very important to look at, which would be a linear regression. So this yellow line, is your linear regression line. You notice it touched twice there, it's touching, touching, touching. This is kind of the top that it, it didn't break out, tops didn't break out, a little breakout and a fail, a try breakout, and this one did, and then came down, and you're actually still above it, which is which is a positive. We get a po I'm gonna give us a positive on this. We're actually on the top side of 
the linear regression. I think that that's actually really good because I know how powerful um, deviations and regressions are uh, for technical. So that's, that's really good. I really like that. Now that's based on a 200 day linear regression. Let's go take a look at a linear regression on a shorter time frame and see if that um, has a difference to look at. So let's go look at a 50 day. And on a 50 day, your linear regression, you are literally following, you are literally following suit. So it's this middle one and you're just trending down exactly with it. Now, these are deviations. These are standard deviations, which are very important in technical analysis. You can get indicators like the Bollinger Band, or you can get things that measure deviations. I measure deviations by floating deviations, which is you got your ribbons, which is your 20 through your 50 in the middle. And then if you notice, I have a lighter green, which goes to the top of the price action. That's, that's a, a deviation up. This is a deviation down. Price action tends to stay within the top or lower deviation and of course the middle as well but within that range and it floats based on the volume and price action and trend okay another thing about the floating deviations is you have you have the top line the mid and the lower but as they spread out the further they spread out you're typically your hma is heading up and so is your trend your cloud is blue and and everything is going up with, with strong volume and power okay there's conviction in the trend and it's it's when it uh it, it's when it fans out it's opening up for the nice move but the more it fans out the the closer it gets to needing to turn back off of the deviation and revert to the mean the mean is the 200 the way the crypto and stocks work is it's like a pendulum. You go up, euphoria and hopium, and you come down, I'm thrown in the towel, I'm scared to death, what am I going to do? And it will revert to the mean, which is the 200 moving average, okay? And then you have these deviations. So on the linear regression, on the longer time frame, we're above it, which we got a pro there. And on the shorter, we're, we're literally trending right with it, okay? So we're not below or above. So it's neutral, we can't put a pro or a con, but I will just take a note about this to tell you something. The fact that we're not, you know, below it, um, deviating significantly below it is positive. Um, however, if you notice that the standard deviation three points, three levels down happens to fall directly on that um, 32,729. That's a 50 day linear regression. Interesting how that lines up perfectly with that low that was felt uh, back in January, late January. Okay, so on a short term linear, it's basically trending right down to it. And if you were to take the time frame that it would take to get there based on this path down, I can find it in there. Well, you're looking at something like June 14th. Now, didn't the other thing on the on the uh, the wedge show us June 11th? So now we've taken a window from June 11th to June 14th, and the other thing that I did showed in, in June as well. So we might be onto something. This thing might just trend down slowly and then bounce, and maybe it doesn't go all the way down to the big one. Okay, uh, the 28, maybe, maybe it bounces on this 30, 32 area, okay? 32,800, okay? So that's, that's positive. So there you have it. We have three pros. We have 10 cons from a technical perspective only currently, okay? So will this come down? Well, it has a, a higher chance of coming down, a higher probability of coming down. How far will it come down? Nobody really knows. However, um, you know, again, I think that the lowest that it could go is 28,532.82. Um, it could come down further, but remember the bear flag, which I think is a chart pattern we can truly look at on here, uh, has a measured move, which lands exactly on that, which happens to land exactly on this double bottom support from the past, okay? So I think there's some more pain to come. Uh, however, 
I will say that this being tied to the NASDAQ, let's, let's look at one thing. We might be able to get a pro out of it. Um, I want to go look at the index here and see if we're at a key level of support with a possible bounce. And I'll take a look uh, at this real quick. No, we broke the support, unfortunately. We broke the support. Which means that this could come down, and this is going to be generalized, could come down another 2,000 points. Well, less than that, sorry. Um, we'll call that 250, just call it 400. Could come down 1,400 more points. Double that at the rate that Bitcoin has dropped, apples for apples, that we spoke about earlier. That's $2,800. This is just rough. Okay. And let's just see where that would put us on... Bitcoin. So it's 2,800. This is speculative, okay, what I'm talking about here, but we're at 35,770.91 minus 2,800 or so brings us to 32,970, which would be right, right about there. Oh, and look at that, it lines up exactly with this drop. Okay, so let's just, let's just look. So 32, we'll put it right here. So it's, it's just a hair above it. So if you're, and, and again, I did that math uh, based off this 47.93 and the 24, it's almost a double from its highs to its lows. And since it's tied to the NASDAQ, I'm correlating it. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking that this thing probably has got to come all the way down to 32,733, 32,900 area and uh, 32,700 to like 33,000 seems pretty likely at this point. And also something that I know from pattern recognition is this is not just at the top. This is actually coming down. And typically when they come down, as soon as as soon as it starts to um, to like slow the slope, it'll tell you before it's going to end. So if this comes down to here, this thing might already be starting its curve because it can tell that people are holding and people are accumulating and the, the velocity is slowing and it can tell all that stuff. So we can do an update video on that. But as it stands, I am going to say we're probably going to come down to 32,700 area, 733. And uh, it's unfortunate, but we're pretty close. Just remember, if you're high conviction and you're in at a loss, you might as well just hold this sucker, okay? And then let it, let it do its thing and then have the condition to buy. I'll make a video when it's time. Have the condition to buy so that you're really, when you average down, you're, you're really cutting your percentage. Remember, it's about the percentage of your money, okay? It's not about the dollar amount. It doesn't matter if it's $2 million or $2. What matters is, is it the percentage of the money invested that's being lost, okay? If you bought at the very top on that day and you're down 47.93, well, you have just double up once at the bottom when it, when it does a bounce support, HMA will show you some of these things will turn and you've cut it in half and you're in an uptrend. So you're gonna start making that back and you have double the amount to bring it that way. That's why I always talk about in this particular moment in the stocks, the way, the reason that there was all that high bub bubbling volume and, and volatility going on a couple months ago is because people were doing what I've been trying to teach you about doing. You, you put five, six X into your position, but only when there's momentum going up. So you reduce your percentage down from 10%, you buy, you double whatever your investment, you're at 5%. You triple, you're at 2.5. You quad, uh, quadruple, you're at 1.25. You do it again, uh, you're five X, you're, you're at 0.75. Well, 0.75% it's still gonna be the same dollar amount loss, but you're gonna have a lot more shares or tokens and you're gonna be in momentum. So it's gonna easily, with the extra extra muscle, the extra pressure of those tokens or um, stocks into momentum, it's gonna bring you up to even or even profitable. And the next time it shows a condition to sell, you just take the profit and de-risk the portfolio and you just go one at a time to get yourself out of this. Remember, you can't be a baller without a ball. Who loves you, baby? Welcome. 
to the wheelhouse.